Hello, and welcome to Northampton Community Television's live coverage of Northampton Election Day 2009. I'm proud to be your host here tonight, Henry White. Joining me in the studio is Mary Serez, publisher of NorthamptonMedia.com. Hey, Mayor. Hi, Henry. How are you? <laughs> Great. Good. You it's excited? A lot of, I'm very excited. It's a lot of fun to be here tonight. It's been a really crazy election season. It certainly um, has. It's going to be a wild night. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be glad when it's over. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's been a long one. Speaking of wild, yeah. we also have David Pakman, who is live at City Hall, which, um, from what I understand, people are starting to file in. Why don't we um, go to Dave and see how he's doing out there at City Hall? Hey, Dave. Hey, Henry. That's absolutely right. It's really starting to get a little bit busier here. There's probably about, I don't know, 20 or so people behind me and another 20 behind the camera. And right over here to my left, we're going to have the results coming in all night. They're going to be written in right over here so we'll have a front row seat um, and they're also going to be coming down the elevator which is over to my right and into the city clerk's office which is where they'll be counted and then presumably something will happen and eventually we'll have some winners great well the more you send us the results what we'll do here folks is bring you live updates ward by ward as they come in mary well you know we have what do we have um We've got a mayoral race. Mm -hmm. We have a race in Ward 1. We have uh, a race in Ward 3. Right. Right. Uh, we have a race in Ward 7. Let me check my notes, you know. Um, we have, uh, oh, let's see, there's an at-large. There's uh, an at-large. Th there's an at-large right. race. Okay, well, Ward 1, we've got Andy Vidal-McNair versus the incumbent Maureen Carney. That's an interesting right. race there. That's going to be very interesting. Yes. Ward 2, Paul Spector is running unopposed. Mm -hmm. Ward 3, we've got the incumbent Bob Reckman being challenged by Angela Plasman. That's right. Ward 4, Pamela Schwartz is the only candidate because uh, Brian Foote dropped out right, of the race. Exactly. Right, exactly. So she's a shoe in She's a shoe in for right. Ward 4. Uh, she'll be taking over David. Narkowitz's seat. He's right. running for the at-large, exactly. right? Uh, Ward 5, we've got David Murphy. Mm -hmm. He's running unopposed. Ward 6, Marianne Labarge. And Ward 7, a hot race between uh, Deb Jacobs and, uh, and Gene Tacey. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, speaking of hot mm -hmm. races, yeah. this mayoral candidacy this season has just been it's, crazy. it's been crazy. It's been crazy. And um, it, it's been full of little vignettes and, and bizarre stories. The teabagger email. Oh, my the goodness. The Steve Susco video. <laughs> to say nothing of 14. Was it? Did we really have 14 debates? I believe so. It seemed like 14. It was just crazy. You, you know, know I, I wondered how the mayoral candidates were staying alive and, and staying vertical. Right. You know, because there was just debate after debate after debate after debate. I agree you know, with you. Right. They'll be glad when it's over. Right. Right. So, as a person that covers politics um, extensively, right. what did you gather from this election season in terms of the issues? I mean, you, you, you know, you, you mentioned some of the... You know, it's, it's a funny thing. People always say that they want to keep election discourse focused on the issues. But you know what? It never happens. <laughs> it always tends to veer right. off into the personal. And it's sad, but it's typical, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there have been very important issues. There's the landfill. There Absolutely. are issues of economic development. Um, there are issues of public participation and transparency in government. And I think that's a big one that's a big for one. this election. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. So, oh, oh, David Pakman. David Pakman. David Pakman is the mm -hmm. um, producer of Midweek Politics, That's which is right. a syndicated radio show. And we're we're gonna gonna go out yeah, to let's him. go talk to David. Hey, Dave, what's going on out there? Hey, guys, I have Jesse Adams here, who is running uh, city councilor at large. How are you feeling about how today went? Good. I feel pretty good. We ran a good campaign, good positive campaign, had a lot of support. So Jesse's in a race. It's a three-way race for two positions, and the top two vote-getters will be uh, at-large city councilors. What did you do differently today than you've done the last four or five months campaigning? Well, today I just, I just went around to the different locations all day and uh, held signs all day. I mean, in the past, I go directly to people's houses. I did direct contact, but today I, just, I was at poll locations. Uh, what time do you think we're going to have some final results here tonight? 5.30, quarter to 6. There's a lot of races, a lot of numbers. Tomorrow morning? 
we're at 8.30, <laughs> quarter, quarter to nine. Well, I was going to say, this is, I, was, I only committed to like 90 minutes or so. If we were going to be here overnight, yeah, we're, we're in about 12 hours. I don't even know. You don't even know what day it is. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jesse. We'll go back to you guys in the studio. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Dave, I wouldn't be surprised if Jesse's been up since 5.30, quarter to six in the morning. He's been at it nonstop. Well, I don't know if you've seen him I, around Well, Jesse's town. been running quite a campaign. He has his lawn signs all over town. He's been canvassing every ward, yes, as he, he has. has been fond of telling us. Yes, yes. <laughs> he's, been so, he's been all over. He's been all he's over. He's been all over. He's been over. So, like, what, okay, so what's with the, the at-large city council race, right? right? We've got three candidates running for two open seats. Mm -hmm. We've got Jesse, Jesse Adams, David Narkowitz, and Kathleen Silva right. running for two seats. Um, one which was vacated by the decision of um, David Narkowitz to, no, wait a minute, no, how does that okay. work? No, 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 no. Let, let's get this straight. This is, this is hard to follow, right? It is. It's a little hard to follow. So, okay. Um, oh, James Dostal, right. James Dostal isn't running anymore, right? right. He's retired. He's retired. Okay. He's retired. Right, right, right. And um, so someone will be taking that. Right, exactly, See. exactly. And Michael Bardsley is, of course, running for mayor. Right. Right, exactly. So that leaves uh, two at-large seats, which are available. Three people are running for them. Absolutely. Right, yeah, David Narkowitz, Jesse Adams, and Kathleen Silva. Right. So that'll be an interesting race. That will yeah. be an interesting yeah. race. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. we'll get back to um, the city politics in a second, but I want to give you a chance to talk about about NorthamptonMedia.com. NorthamptonMedia .com. Yeah, thank yeah. you. What is, yeah. what is NorthamptonMedia.com? It's a brand new internet news site. I launched a couple of months ago after wow. after about a Fairly year and a half new. of planning. Okay. Right. Yes, we launched just in time to cover the Northampton election season. What a and great time, it's huh? It's good timing. Right. We've been providing multimedia news coverage as well as commentary. And another thing that I'm doing is that I'm aggregating news from a number of different media sources. Okay. For instance, I will take a look every morning and I will see, you know, what's new on Mass Live? I will say, what have the bloggers been up to? I'll say, has, uh, has anybody posted a new podcast on WHMP? I'll do a search of Google News Northampton and bring in, bring in news nice. from as many different sources as I can and link, sometimes embed. Great. So what I'm endeavoring to do is to provide a one-stop shopping experience for consumers of Northampton I news. love that. Yeah, One stop you. shopping for media around Northampton, huh? That's right. Now, do you also allow guest columnists? I guest do. Bloggers, I encourage stuff? guest columnists. I'm, I encourage columnists to submit material. That's great. Now, I am a little bit particular. You know, I'm not going to print just anything. And I like working with good writers. Right. Okay. So, so there's been a lot of back and forth. There are some good people who have been writing for Northampton Media. There's a great column up there now by a woman named Jendi Ryder. Jendi Ryder. Her name is R Jendi okay. Ryder, R E I T E R. Can you give us a hint of what she said? Well, she, she, has, she, has, she has printed a response to um, a mayoral endorsement that was printed in the English Spanish uh, newspaper called La Prensa. Right. right. It was a very controversial I endorsement. That. There was some language in that endorsement that mm -hmm. some people took issue with. And Jendi, Jendi has written a, a, a a, an incisive response wow. to, to the La Prensa okay. endorsement. That's worth taking a look at. So we're going to yeah. have to do that. You hear it, folks. <laughs> NorthamptonMedia.com if you want some information about what's going on in Northampton along with some of the other media around town. Mm. Go check it out. You know what? what? Let's go back to David. Let's see. David see what's Packman. What's, up, what's happening in City Hall? <laughs> hey, Dave. David. Can you hear? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Hey, so it's really starting to get busier and busier here. We got a lot of young people here. I see some Bardsley stickers, uh, a lot of local local workers, and quite a few people hanging out behind the camera, probably more so than over here. We're still waiting on the first election results. Don't see too many of the candidates here yet, even though I did just see Pam Schwartz walk in. Uh, so we'll try to get some more people in front of the camera soon, and hopefully soon this board to my left is going to start to fill up, and we'll be able to put some numbers in and see where tonight is going. That's great. Well, we can't look, we can't wait for that. Um, just to remind you folks out there, you're watching live coverage of Election Day 2009 on Northampton Community Television, and um, Mayor. So <laughs> let's talk about this mayoral 
the what? Race oh, the mayoral race. The mayoral oh, race. must we? <laughs> you know, this I is just feel it's just been beaten. It's been beaten like a dead horse, you know. It has been. It's it's you Hasn't know both been... both candidates have their strong proponents, and uh, you know the 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 Higgins people feel very very strongly mm -hmm. that she is the best leader to take us through the next two years, and the Bardsley supporters are just as adamant. Right. You know, the Bardsley supporters are calling for change. And uh, the Higgins supporters are, are are calling for stability through the crisis. Right. right. Now, have you ever yeah. seen such a hotly contested race in Northampton here? It's you know I I haven't been covering politics for that long. I mean there are you know there there were races in the past I'm sure that mm. were as hotly contested. This is the hottest one that I've seen. Right. <laughs> right. Well, she hasn't really had a challenger. She had she was challenged by Rick Feldman in 2005. In 2005. And, he, right. and actually you know he uh, got 38 percent of the vote. He did get 38. Right? But but you know Gene Tacy mm -hmm. uh, two years ago waged a very effective write-in campaign. Really. He came very yeah he actually did very very well. Right. With a write-in campaign, so I guess yeah, that, that, that was that was yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That that may be sign of people wanting change and. Well, you know. right. I mean, and two, and that does point to the split, which many people are fond of pointing to. And I'm not sure that it's as simple as this. People say, oh, there's there's no ho, and then there's hamp. Right. There's Florence, and then, and then there's, there's the downtown. Right. I I really don't see it as as being quite that simple. But but there is, you know, you you do you do see you are seeing a split in the electorate, I think. Um, and I one of the splits mm -hmm. is between people who uh, support tax overrides right. and people who feel that they've had enough. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the people who feel that they've had enough are, are people maybe of moderate means mm. who, who own smaller homes in Florence and Leeds. Right. Right. And I think there's been a lot of mischaracterization yeah. um, on both sides mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the downtown crowd might look at the folks in Ward 6 and 7 who have had enough of tax overrides right. and, and try to paint them as being, you know, crazy right wingers. Right. Right. And uh, some of the folks who are in opposition to more tax overrides might look at uh, the uh, the proponents of tax overrides and call them, you know, oh, elitist, entrenched insiders, right? right. So there's been plenty of name calling on both a sides. A lot of name calling, a oh lot of split. Isn't gosh. that sort of reminiscent of not just recent with yeah. the even the bid process? Oh, the bid process, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not even good. They, right, not that we had <laughs> that, but I mean, while you were talking about well, the bid process was interesting too because there was a splinter group which arose out of that which. Um, I, what the poverty is not a crime, folks. Poverty is right, not a crime, right, folks. right, right. But, but that well, had, real, had, had a, a, a lot of impact on that. They actually did because thing. earlier Absolutely. on the panhandling ordinance was was part and parcel of the bid legislation, and and yeah. uh, you know it's like their activism. They I do believe, the right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Split, and you know the that. ACLU lawyer Bill Newman got That's involved, right? right yeah, right. I was at that city council meeting. That was great. Yeah, that was, it was a lot of fun. Awesome. It was a hot one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. So I don't know about you, but um, yeah. I'm I'm ready to check back in with Dave. Is it okay to? Can we um, take a, a check uh, in with David Packman? Yeah, City? Oh, in, sure. In just a second. Absolutely. Um, I would also remind folks that um, you are watching Election Day 2009 on Northampton Community Television. Northampton Community TV is your local community television statement. It's an independent 501c3 organization. It is not a part of Comcast. NCTV is part of the city of Northampton's government. We are a community organization here to educate Northampton citizens in television production and to provide opportunities not for citizens to create. Independent of the We're independent of city government <laughs> I here. I stand corrected. NCTV is a public space, though. We are, in essence, as local as media can get. Northampton Community TV provides the tools and space to create art. It provides the tools and space to provide transparency of local government. And these things are made possible through the participation of Northampton residents, you all out there. If you like to see something that you don't see on NCTV, you can do something about it. You can change that by learning how to make television yourself. NCTV exists for this purpose. We will now go over 
and stand by. We're going live to David Pakman at City Hall. Hey, I'm here with Tim Carpenter, director of Progressive Democrats for America, who lives in Florence, I believe, right? I'm here. I voted and I'm a resident. <laughs> so what's your impression of this race and why it's important, maybe on the national level? Well, I think it's really important that we see a real infusion of young folks voting tonight. I was very impressed with some of the young candidates. I'm hopeful that tonight we'll see a few upsets. I think it's indicative of what's happening around the country. This is a year after Barack Obama tonight. The youth is very much engaged. I think a lot of folks I talked to at the polls today are connecting these issues with what's going on in Afghanistan with the health care debate. So I think here at the local level, uh, we're going to hopefully make some impact. Hey, so, Tim, one of Tim's big issues with PDA is health care and the possibility of some kind of better health care system. Mm. What, in what way does a local election like this affect the possibility of national health care reform, or does it at all? Oh, it absolutely does. Both of our mayoral candidates were with us last March, as you were, uh, with the media here in Northampton to talk about what's going on at the national level, the tin pack. Mayor Higgins was there, and Mike Marsley was there to talk about that impact. Uh, when Congressman Conyers was here, 800 residents were there. It's very important at the local level that we connect what's happening at the national level. I think we have a great group of candidates tonight. Hopefully we'll elect a few of them committed to these issues to work not only in Washington, but work out in Boston to connect what's going on here in Northampton across the country. Tim Carpenter, Progressive Democrats for America. Hopefully we'll have some results here soon. Great. They, they, <laughs> wow. Yeah. What do you think of that gentleman's comments? Oh, Tim Carpenter? Well, I, I, I would like to, to ask him, I would a, I'd like to ask him to be a little bit more specific. You know, how does the national health care debate specifically tie in right. with the local debate? Well, I would have asked him to elaborate. Right, okay. <laughs> but isn't all politics local to some degree? Well, I, I believe. Mean, yeah, I, this yeah. is why I love mm. local politics, because right. this is where people can actually make a difference. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that are happening at the national and at the global level, and they're all playing out right here in Northampton. Right. You know, issues having to do with energy, um, you know, with the scarcity of resources, mm -hmm. money. Money's going to be a big one. Oh, money is a big one. Money's, you know, I mean, <laughs> really, the real challenge in the next two years or right. beyond is going to be, you know, trying to do more with less. Absolutely. Trying to fund essential services right. on a dwindling budget. Right. You know, we might see massive budget cuts um, at the state level mid-year. Right. It's, it's going to be very, whoever is elected mayor is going to have. Um, it's going to be tough. There's going to be some real challenges. Right. Yeah. 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 So, let's talk about the question that's on the ballot. Which one is that? The land. Oh, the landfill ballot question. Yes. Oh my goodness. I'm right. sure you have some. Well, the natural history of that ballot question mm -hmm. is very, very interesting. And the ballot question reads: Shall the city of Northampton expand the landfill over the Barnes Aquifer? Okay. Okay. Now that question was advanced by um, Councillor Bardsley and Marianne Labarge, mm -hmm. and they failed to gather support from right. their fellow councillors. So a group called Water Not Waste, um, it's a group of citizens who are opposed to the landfill expansion, launched a signature campaign to get that question on the ballot. Okay. And, and they did eventually prevail. But in the meantime, some of the other councillors advanced another landfill question that was very, very long and very, very complicated right. with a list of uh, pros and cons. And oh, there was just a lot of debate back mm -hmm. and forth. There were charges that the question itself was, was uh, really loaded and tilted. And uh, then the, the formers of that question charged that this earlier question, shall the city of Northampton expand the landfill over the Barnes Aquifer, was in itself loaded and tilted. Right. You know, lots of back and forth. Eventually, um, the other question was withdrawn, and this is the one that we're left with. Right. Right. And folks are, seem to be really weighing in. I know that the, quite a few city council uh, meetings that I attended, people feel um, very... People feel very strongly, strongly about, it. about it. One right. way or another. One way or another. And it's been difficult because the city council has been under a so-called gag order. Right. This is, this is the funny thing because the city the city council has reserved the right to issue, to issue special permits in the cases of what's called a, a heavy public use. Mm -hmm. And usually, of course, the planning board issues special permits, but in this case, it's the city council. So they were advised by lawyers not to speak with their constituents about the landfill expansion because they were going to be acting as the permit-granting body. Great. So it, it, it just got very, very complicated. We're yeah. going to come back to that. Yeah. We're going to yeah. go back to City Hall, to yeah. David Pakman. What's going on, David? Good use of this. 
Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm here with Mike Flynn, who's running for school committee. Is this your first experience running? Uh, actually, second. The uh, Four years ago, I was elected to Ward 7. Uh, I, was run I ran unopposed then, so this is my first experience actually in a race. What's been different this time around than the last time? Uh, last time, I really didn't have to do any forums. It was it was a given, so I just would go around meet constituents and talk about what the issues were, but there wasn't the added pressure of really trying to get out and, and have people recognize your name and, and know what, you're, you're, what you'll bring to the board. Jesse Adams told me we might not hear the results until 5.30 tomorrow morning. It seems he's been up for a long time and doesn't even know what day or time it is. What time do you think we'll know, at least have some results here? Uh, I'm hopeful. I was here four years ago when this came in, so we started seeing things around 9 o'clock or so. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that happens. I don't want to have to sleep on it and wake up in the morning. And where is the Mike Flynn post-election party? Uh, actually, the, you know, it's such a small campaign, so, you know, if someone wants to meet for a drink, that, that's where it is. So. The party may, it may start here. Who knows where it'll go? Not, we'll see where it goes from here. All right. Thanks, Mike. Back to you guys. Great. <laughs> wow. That's an important question, isn't it? Where's the party? Where's the party? Where's the party? Yeah. Now, I know that Claire Higgins is having her after party at the Paradise City Tavern. Oh, really? Right. And Drinking okay. Liberally put a, put a message out earlier today. Well, that's good to yes. know. Yes. No, stating that, you know, Drinking Liberally is going to be meeting at the Paradise City Tavern today at 6.30. Okay. But it's pure coincidence that Claire Higgins is also going to be holding her after party there. Drinking Liberally wanted everybody to make sure right. that they knew that Drinking Liberally is not affiliated with any um, particular campaign. That's interesting. Right. And what I heard is that mm -hmm. the Bardsley campaign is going to be meeting over at the brewery. Wow. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Right. Well, important you, information. Important information. <laughs> As you hear it out there, folks, if you haven't been out to vote, too late. But at the same time, <laughs> you can get out and join um, whoever you voted for at the after party. That's so. right. That's right. Well, I wonder. I wonder where the landfill people are going to be having their after party. Right. Exactly. <laughs> or if they will. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You could either drown your sorrow or celebrate. Right. 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 Let me just remind the folks here that you are watching <laughs> Northampton Community TV's live coverage of Election Day 2009. This is. Um, I'm having a blast here. This it's is really fun. You know, it's, it's it's so great to be involved in. Um, What's going on here in Northampton? This is—it's such a uh, amazing community. It's a wonderful city. You know, it's a wonderful city. I interviewed each—well, not each and every one. I mm -hmm. interviewed most of the city council candidates as a part of the Northampton Media Project. And to a person, when I asked each of them why are we running, each and every person said, "I'm running because I love the city of Northampton." Absolutely. It's the standard yeah. response. Speaking uh, of um, interviewing people, yeah. you, and you've been fortunate enough. Do you want to talk about what you do? Absolutely. Oh. Um, I was just getting ready to mention that um, I do a show here um, on, for Northampton Community Television called Spotlighting Paradise. <laughs> and I seek out um, to spotlight cool people like yourself and many of the amazing, the amazing people and creative people in the community. Right. And um, it's been such a blast. I mean, again, Northampton has so many amazing and creative artists, musicians, right. you know, poets. Right. Um, I recently had on Miss Pioneer Valley. Oh, really? Who was this um, <laughs> Smith College student who just woke up one well, day and decided that she wanted to, you know, Right. Well, it's, that, a, it's an amazing, that. it's an amazing city. As a friend of mine is fond of saying, Northampton is a small city with a national profile. Right. Right. We are on the radar. We are on the radar. Ma right. As a matter of fact, yeah. we actually uh, was voted um, something. Oh, something or other. <laughs> recently. <laughs> the best blah, blah, blah. The best blah, 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 not right. too long ago. But we'll take that. Right. We'll take it. We'll right. take that. Right. We'll take it. Absolutely. Right. So let's get back to these pol the politics here, <laughs> you know, I know this is that's the issue of the, the night, the topic of the night. Yeah. And and before we get back and I, I got a, another question to ask you. Sure. Uh, we're going to go back out to, to Dave. He's David a busy Beckman. man out there sure at is. City Hall. You know, I'm sure that City Hall is just packing in and, and it's probably the, very exciting over there. I bet it you is. the energy Yeah, let's check in wild. with David. Yeah. Dave. Hey guys, so Dave. it's really, the tension is building here. There's probably close to 100 people in here now, and I have what I want to make clear, some unofficial results that were posted at Ward 1, okay. uh, but they are, as of now, unofficial. And in Ward 1A, we have Claire Higgins with 226 and Michael Bardsley with 173. 
In Ward 1B, we have Claire Higgins with 556, Michael Bardsley 379. So doing some quick math, that's about a 200 and some vote lead in Ward 1 for Claire Higgins. Um, also in Ward 1A, Jesse Adams 189, David Narkowitz 240. Uh, and in Ward 1B, Jesse with 422 and David Narkowitz with 623. So clearly David Narkowitz running way ahead right now after Ward 1 and Jesse in a pretty close second. Uh, so that's what we have now. Back to you guys. Thanks. Hmm. Okay, well. Well, that's interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> They're starting it. to come in, though. They're starting to come that's in. Right. The results are starting to come in. Still right. got a long way to go. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know. It's exciting being over at City Hall on election night. It's got to be. I mean, did you see the crowd? It's just electric over there. It is. You know, right. You know? Partisans on both sides. That's right. You know, the media is that's there. That's right. You know, I'm sure there's probably somebody over there from the Republican from the Gazette. Oh, absolutely. There's probably somebody over there from Channel 22, from ABC 40, and of course we've got NCTV, all of the bloggers. You know, the yeah. media presence in Northampton has really blossomed over the past two years. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Dave, what's going on over there? Can you hear me? Hey, guys. Hey. What's going on, David? What's going on over there? Well, that's, I'm a little taken aback uh, at this point. I don't even know what to say. It's really getting busy here, and as you can see, a lot of activity. Uh, a lot of the campaign, uh, main campaign staffers are coming in, and while we don't have anything on the board, we did get some initial results from Ward 1. Um, I don't really know too much what else to say here. The tension's just kind of building, and there's people even really close to me with cell phones taking pictures as I talk to you right now. Right. Are they taking pictures of you? They, it's either me or the board. <laughs> I don't know. There's something interesting over here. And I feel like I may be in someone's shot, even. I think there are a couple of city councilors right behind you. There are a couple. I see... Uh, Marianne Labarge. Marianne Labarge is right behind me, and I see Jesse Adams' is campaign manager. Gospel? If you see his head sticking out, way in the back, that's Rick Gifford, Jesse's campaign manager. Uh -huh. Hard to miss him. Oh, Tall Rick. Tall Rick. Tall Rick, right. That's Absolutely. Jim Dostal. Jim Dostal is, is just to your right. You know, you can see better than I can. Yes, he is. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm bumping into people. It's really starting to get a little bit crowded in here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, you asked for it, um, <laughs> and they're coming. They are absolutely showing up. That's no, no question about that. <laughs> hey, Dave, um, you want to talk a little bit about uh, midweek, midweek politics? Absolutely. So Midweek Politics is the national talk radio program that I produced. We're currently on about 25 non-commercial radio stations everywhere from Provincetown all the way to Alaska. And, you know, some of the cities in between, that kind of large expanse of land. We're also on 10 TV stations. And most recently, we've been picked up by uh, Drexel TV, which is located in Philadelphia, reaches almost wow. a million people, as well as the Marin County I don't know if it's Marin or Marin. I'm not from California, but it's in California. So the program's going great. We really deal with national politics. We've had John Kerry on recently and hope to have him back on soon. That's great. Uh, and Ralph Nader's scheduled to come on in the next couple of weeks. That should be interesting. It should be. Yeah. Well, you're doing a wonderful job, I tell you. I don't know about you, Mary, but I've, I've seen the, the Oh, David, the show. Does, David does great work. Yeah, oh, he's very absolutely. talented. Very yeah. talented. Local it's board. very, very different than the situation here. Not as much to contend with when you're in a nice, quiet radio studio. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But you're the right man down there at City Hall. We'll I hope so. Yeah. We'll I hope we don't have a disaster as it, as it continues to get more crowded and I get pushed into the wall here. Right. Hmm. So... We'll, we'll be checking back in with you in just a couple of minutes there. That sounds good. Hopefully we'll have some official results soon. I'm keeping my eye on the elevator here, which when it opens, I guess is a sign that we'll have some real numbers. All right. Hmm. Well, let's look at the city council race a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, I th each of the city councilors has been pretty clear about who they're supporting for mayor. Right. Right. Oh, except for Jesse Adams, who's being coy. Right. <laughs> a little bit. Yes. A little bit. Right. Um, but uh, we have uh, the Bardsley supporters mm -hmm. are what I would say, Marianne Labarge, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, we have, uh, and uh, let's see, uh, the people who are running, uh, there are three people who are the, running um, who are clear Bardsley supporters. That would be uh, Angela Plasman, 
um, uh, uh, Gene Tacey, Gene Tacey and, and uh, Andy Vidal McNair right. in Ward One. In Ward One. Right. Right. Um, you know, because of, in the council, what what if we had? It's like, look, there's David Narkowitz, Paul Spector. Uh, they've been pretty strong Higgins supporters most of the For way. For most of the point, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, oh well, there's Michael Bardsley, who of course. Who <laughs> He's really started challenging the mayor from oh, the council. Last couple of years, right? Maybe? Well, he lost the city council presidency uh, was a few months ago. Right. To Dost Dostel. Right. There's Dostal. Well, he's retiring. He's a Higgins supporter. Um, what? Uh, let's see. I've already been through Marion Labarge. David Sil Murphy Captain is Silva? pretty much of a Higgins supporter. What's that? Silva. Oh, Kathleen Silva's Silva. a Bardsley supporter. Absolutely. Yeah, very much yeah. so. So some people are watching the race from that perspective. Right. Looking at the balance on the city council. Yeah. You know. And if they yeah. are looking at it from that perspective, yeah. I mean, again, it seems somewhat balanced. It seems kind of even almost. Well, it hasn't been even. I think that the current city council um, is, uh, are, are, you know, the balance is tipped toward Higgins supporters. Mm. And this, this actually has been a campaign issue, the balance of power between the city council and the mayor. Mm. The mayor chairs the city council meetings, and some people have criticized her for that. I, it's part of the city charter. Right. You know, um, and some people are calling for a greater a, a degree of, uh, uh, of, uh, of division between mm -hmm. the city council and the mayor, a greater balance of power. So I think that this election will, the results of this election will be very important in that regard. You know? Awesome. Yeah. I'm told we're going to go back to David Pakman. Dave. Guys, I'm here with Maureen Carney, who is the incumbent city councilor in my ex-ward, I guess we could say, Ward 1. My mom still lives in Ward 1. Okay. Don't know who she voted for. I know she received a litany of campaign literature from you, your opponent, and people who aren't even running. Everybody delivering literature at her house, apparently. What was different this time around than previous times for you? This was the highest turnout I'd seen in the two elections I ran. I think we had uh, close to 1,400, which is a great turnout in Ward 1. Um, I think just the fact that there was so much action citywide brought out a lot of voters. I was very pleased to have the support I did. And I was really glad to have the opportunity to have such a, um, you know, an active campaign and a very active opponent. So um, I uh, congratulated Andy on his campaign that he ran. He ran a, a strong, hard campaign. And I'm hoping to reach out to him and folks that um, were his supporters and ask them to help me in these coming years ahead. We're going to have some, some tough years here in Northampton uh, just to get back on track. And, uh, and, and tell me, win or lose, we can assume you're staying in Ward 1? Oh, yes, yes. I love Ward 1. I live in a great little neighborhood right off King Street by a park and a lot of friends and family here. This is a great city. I love being on the city council and working for the folks in the ward. Um, I want people to contact me with concerns that they've had. And uh, I think uh, I feel really positive about the direction we're going in the city. Well, as you guys know, Ward 1, one of the big issues in Ward 1 is King Street. And while we don't have the time to get into the minutia now, <laughs> the votes have been cast, and we won't, we won't examine that yet. But we will take a look at the results as soon as we get them. Great. Thanks a lot, Dave. Yeah, she's had a she's had a tough uh, um, she's had a tough challenger in Andy Vidal McNair. Yes. He came out of nowhere. Yeah. Right, and all of a sudden his lawn signs are everywhere. That's right. right. I think he kind of took her by surprise. I think so too. Right. Yeah. And he's yeah. raised you know um, you know controversial issues, but um, you know nevertheless. Some well, right, right. I yeah, he's he's been very much concerned about King Street, but but Maureen has a very strong record. She's running on a very strong record. She sure is. Yes, she is. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go right back to Dave. Hey guys, are we on? Well, yeah. Yes. Wow, well, it's, it's so loud in here. I don't even know. Uh, we may not even be broadcasting, but I'm going to do this interview anyway. I have David <laughs> fine, Narkowitz David. here. You're doing good. <laughs> who is running at large, and Ward 1 results very favorable for you. Seem to be doing, I, I would say, first place by, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say a long shot, but you're doing very well. Uh, did you expect that in Ward 1, and which ward do you think may be a little tougher for you? Uh, you know, I didn't. I was. I tried to really be active in all wards, and so I didn't really come into today with any kind of sense of how I was going to do in any particular ward. You know, I just tried to have a strong presence in every ward and had house parties and and tried to make person-to-person -person connections throughout the city. So, 
Um, you know, obviously Ward 4 I've represented for four years, so I think I felt pretty comfortable with Ward 4. Um, obviously out in, um, in Florence and Leeds where I'm not as well known, those were areas where I think I needed to do a lot of work to introduce myself. So uh, although I'm feeling like the results that I'm hearing are pretty strong out there as well. So, so, so that's gratifying. what has been the biggest difference compared to running in one ward? Obviously, the difference is you're all over the city. But logistically, how many more people do you need or well, how many more hours do you need to be able to reach all wards? Well, it's a bigger, obviously, a bigger operation. You know, it's hard. To, I, in, when I ran in Ward 4, I was able to get to every door in the ward. Obviously, you can't do that citywide. Um, so, you know, you rely on a lot of volunteers who can help you and people who can introduce you or we try to do a lot of neighborhood parties throughout the city so that, you know, I could come to a neighborhood and people could invite their, their friends and neighbors over as a way to meet me. I tried to go to things like the transfer station where I could read a whole cross section of people. Um, you know, just going to diners, going to Smitty's in, in, uh, in Bay State Village, just places like that where I could try to meet people from, from different walks of life in the city. So. Well, the first and second place uh, candidates as of right now in Ward 1, David Narkowitz and Jesse Adams, both campaigning all over the place for sure. Thanks, David. Wow. Hmm, David yep. Narkowitz. David Narkowitz. Some people say he wants to be mayor someday. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> he's certainly getting the pedigree for it. Oh, yes, right. You yeah. know, he's, he's the king of introducing legislation in the city right, council, right? right? His most recent was um, introducing um, a move that would require a review of the city charter every 10 years decennial charter review, which was one of the recommendations of the Best Practices Committee, mm. and that passed the council. So now we're going to have a review of the city charter every 10 years. Right. And that was a, that was a Narkowitz thing. That was a Narkowitz yeah, thing. Yeah, that was a Narkowitz thing. The other thing that Narkowitz has been really strongly behind is the roundabout outside of Look Park, because he's a member okay. of the Parking and Transportation Commission. Right. So the roundabout has been his baby, mm. and that's been controversial. That is controversial. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, David Narkowitz. David Narkowitz. Well, right, exactly. He had been a Ward 4 city councilor, and now he's running for at-large. At-large. That's right. Well, I want to stick with Ward 1 again for sure. a little bit because yeah. at, the, at the debate, which we were at, oh, yeah. um, there were some issues that came up. It was um, a cantankerous it, debate. It, it was. <laughs> it definitely was. But one that particularly um, yeah. piqued my interest was yeah. to talk about low-income housing and right. um, the public housing residents. Well, Hampshire Heights is at the heart of Ward 1. It is. And that is the city's um, public housing development for right. families. And now, yeah, okay. I'll like, let we're you not go. even going to go there. Right, right. right. Yeah. But I, I mean, I guess <laughs> right. I, yeah. my question would be, right. and you know, I don't know if you've touched upon this or sure. not in, yeah. in your media, yeah. but I've, I didn't hear Anyone say they've been to Hampshire Heights? Well, what struck I, you me know, at the debate was, is okay, anybody okay, knocking this was, on those doors, uh, you know? Right, exactly. Do that's, those folks vote? Well, that's the question. I mean, that's a question. I mean, you ask anybody, and of course, they, they voice support. You know, but, right. but to what extent do people actually, you know, really work within those um, communities that sounds and actively? Like a story for NorthamptonMedia.com. <laughs> well, it might be. It might be. I mean, you know, you know it's a yeah. It's, it's a it's an issue. It is I mean, an issue. If, it know, is an issue. How are the poor represented? Right. In the city? And are people to what trying to include them in the process here? Right. I proactively. Mean, proactively. Proactively. Yeah. Not right. you know when there's just an issue there. Right. Or, when, or just you know, during during election season, just during or, election right, season, yes. or you know, are people right. being responsive to the needs of the uh, of public housing residents? Right. I don't know the answer to that question. Right. Me either. But right. you know, yeah. I like. It's the, an interesting it's question, an interesting though, isn't it? One. Yeah. yeah right. I think I'm going to stay on <laughs> right, that if yeah. you don't. Okay. Yeah. We're going to head yeah. back out to Dave Pack. Sure. Hey, Dave. Largely Can you hear us? Nine. Okay. Well, we're hearing some results. Oh, results. Adams, 422. Narkowitz 623, Silva 288, Arnie 599, Vidal McNair 250, School Committee at Large, 
You've got Terrell 187, Flynn 489, Schroeder 163, Young 55. We're going to jump to the question. Yes, no five, no ninety two. Sure. We have two A, two A, Higgins twenty two. Adams three thirteen. Dark. Four forty. Silva nineteen. You've got school committee out left. Flint sixty five. Schroeder seven. And two seventeen for Young. And then you have to question is yes 04 no 88 okay guys so some results in 1b and 2a so far great are you going to read those back for us because we really didn't get a, a good handle on those numbers there Dave. i will read them back and just so you know a black sharpie used to write all of these it seems to be writing well the tip is pointy for now and we'll see how dull it gets <laughs> by the end of the night so um the long and short of it in 1b and 2a uh, claire higgins ahead by uh, probably a total of 500 votes total um, Jesse Adams and David Narkowitz both well ahead in 1B and 2A. Uh, Maureen Carney almost, uh, actually more than doubling Andrew Vidal McNair's votes in Ward 1 for city councilor. In the school committee, it's hard to get a read on it, but it seems pretty clear that Michael Flynn and James Young are the two that are well ahead at this point. And those reading no on the non-binding question about the landfill are right now ahead. And this is all just based on 1B and 2A. Okay. Hmm. Well. Keep them coming. So Maureen's doing really well in Maureen. Ward 1. Yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> well, congratulations speaking of Ward to Maureen. 1, that's yeah, right. Speaking of Ward 1, exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to remind the folks yeah. out there that you are watching Northampton Communities Television's live coverage of Election Day 2009. I'm your host, Henry White, along with Mary, Mary Serez. <laughs> NorthamptonMedia.com. All right. Right. So what do you think of those um, results that came in so far? Well, you know, it's it's. I'm not that surprised, you know. Mm. Higgins is well doing well in 1B and 2A, uh, but mm. Carney, uh, you know, it, it looks as if she's doing twice as well as Andy Vidal McNair right. according to these uh, results. Pre were those preliminary results or those were actual um, results? Well, were they? I'm going to check. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'll ask so she's Dave. doing well. Let's that's ask Dave that's when great. We go back to that's him. great. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, Dave, you're there with uh, looks like Jean Tacey there. I am here. You do recognize him. Gene Tacey is Everybody here with us. Everybody knows Gene. Everybody knows Gene. What's your impression so far of these early results? Well, I don't know. It was a, it was a pretty clean race. It was uh, civil on my end. And on Deb Jacobs, she ran a great race. Um, and uh, was right down to the wire, too. Uh, and I think we're both happy it's over with. We'll get some rest. Tell me about, as it relates to the mayor's race, these early numbers that we see with Claire Higgins ahead by about 450, 500 votes based on the first two partial wards. Uh, is this where you expected them to be based on these wards? In those wards, yeah, I expected that. There's, there's no surprises in those wards. Uh, we'll see in uh, the uh, five, six, and seven. We'll see how that works out. Uh, Are five, six, and seven the proverbial Florida for this uh, election? State, yeah, Bay State uh, <laughs> leads uh, Florence area. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think they'll do well in the lead section. Um, the rest, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. We'll see. I, they ran. They both ran a good race. There was a lot of debates. They worked very hard. Um, so I'll tell you, they both. They both deserve it, so I don't know who's going to get it, but they both deserve it. Well, well, it's anyone's guess at this point, and Gene Tacey, of course, up on the board as Councillor Ward 7. So far, no votes tallied there, but we hope to get them soon, and we'll let you know, you know as soon as we do. Great. Uh, so, has the crowd gotten in the, 
how's the crowd getting there now? Is it a lot more people coming in still? There's a, there's a lot in? of people here, and as Gene will attest, we're uh, trying to eke out our spot to stand, and even other camera crews. <laughs> I think I see three camera crews trying to push us out, but we've done a pretty good job of taping off our territory here, and uh, we're hoping. Oh, I think we actually have some more live results coming if you guys want to get them. Thank you, Gene. Here we go. Oh, you got some more um, results going on the board? Yes, here we go. All right. Higgins, 200. Bardsley, 135. Adams, 180. Narkowitz, 188. Sulp, 107. School Committee at Large. Uh, Duval, 84. Flynn, 137. Schroeder, 63. That's 4A. 6A. Higgins, 287. Bardsley, 533. We have Adams, 3... Adams, 380. Narkowitz, 410. Silva, 381. We have Mitty, 28 for Duval. Flynn is 511. Schroeder, 184. Young, 196. Yes, 296. No, 465. Okay, so 6A and 4A coming in. Uh, and I think no surprise that in 4A, uh, somewhat of a margin for Claire Higgins and quite the opposite in 6A, where Michael Bardsley uh, won that particular precinct by close to 300 votes. So we'll try to get these tallied up and we'll go back to you guys. Okay. Okay. Well. Um, maybe David would be able to fill us in on uh, the numbers on the landfill ballot question That's in, right. next time we speak well, with we him. Well, we've got to ask him. We'll have to ask That's him right. about that. That's going to be a big one. That is a big one. Yes, right. So we saw Gene Tacy yes. recently. He's yes. quite a character. He is. Right. He is. Yeah, he shows up at practically every city council meeting and he speaks does. at public comment session. Yes. Now, he has copies of the city budget going back I don't know how many years. Well, didn't he used to be a city councilor or? Tacy, no. Not, okay. I'm no, getting no, no, but he has been a else. follower. He's just been, been a follower. follower okay. He's of very the active. Scene. He's very active. He reminds right me yet. of a city councilor because he does have so much insight and information about city budgets and that's right. the happenings. Right. And if he is elected and if Claire Higgins is reelected, he will be a thorn in her side. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's right. No rubber stamp in there. Oh no. It'll be fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sometimes city council is better than TV. Oh, absolutely. You know, especially the public comment session. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We Which, have some fine orators in our community. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. right. Well, sometimes it, you know, they, it goes a little too fast. I, I like when it's um, a lot of diversity and a lot of differences of opinions during the. Uh, I like that too. Yeah. I enjoy public yeah. comment session. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I, it, it's funny though. It, it seems like we only get that when there's you know hot button issues. If we could get that on a normal basis and get more people involved in right. city council exactly. and overseeing what's happening. Exactly. I agree with you. It's important that more and more people get involved in local government. Absolutely. Yes. Speaking of local <laughs> government, we're going to go back, back over to, to David, David. Pacman. Bardsley, 526. <laughs> Adams, 470. Narkowitz, 528. Silva, 333. Three. We have Council Seat Ward 7. We have Jacobs 382. Pace 526. Wow. Wow. Duval 244. Flynn 544. Schroeder 182. Young, 247. 
Okay, guys, so that's 7B, and we're still trying to get a running total here on the mayor's race. So you're calculating all of that in your head, right, David? I'm, uh, I'm carrying the zeros as we speak here. <laughs> David, I have a question. Sure. How's the landfill ballot question going? Um, just taking a quick look at it, it looks like the no's have it by quite a lot. Interesting. Mm. That's a non-binding question. It's very, it's, I'm sorry? That's a non-binding ballot question, but still, it will be seen as a referendum on the issue. Absolutely. So on the non-binding question, we have for yes, 305, 204, 80, 296, and 313. And on no, 492, 288, 207, wow. 465, and 535. Wow, that's very interesting. That is. So at this point, it's not even close. I'll keep working on this tally, and I'll get back to you guys when yeah, we Yeah, well, that's what we're, we're waiting on that, Dave. So we'll, we'll get back to you as soon as possible on that. Okay. You know, the landfill's one of my favorite topics. Is it? It's fascinating, right? Goes back many, many years, you know, back to the late 60s when, when uh, the landfill on Glendale Road was first established. Mm. So uh, there's a rich history there, shall right, we say. Right, <laughs> right, right. And maybe that's the reason why there's so many people that are passionate about it. I mean, well, every yeah, the expansion council, debate. The, the expansion, expansion debate exactly. has been really, really, really cantankerous. Right, you know? yeah. Right, yeah, there's the issue of the aquifer. Uh, there's the issue of residential wells, right. of the city buyout, of the properties at 981 Park, yes, the yes. so-called gag That's order. So right, so right. it's better than watching <laughs> Dallas, you know, <laughs> following the <laughs> landfill controversy. Wow. Right. right yeah. Right. So yeah. anyway, let me just yeah. remind the folks out there, if you're just joining us here, um, we are coming to you live at the Northampton Community's TV studios, covering live Election Day 2009, we're tallying up um, the wards as they come along. Uh, we'll be going right out to David Packman now, who's at City Hall, is going to give us some numbers. Hey, guys, so the running total for the mayor's race with five precincts reporting is Bardsley 1742, Higgins 1875. So about 133 votes right now separating the two candidates uh, with five precincts in. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, great. <laughs> That's so funny. Mike Kirby on mm -hmm. his blog, Kirby on the Loose, yep. called it yesterday. He said Bardsley by two votes. <laughs> really? <laughs> that <laughs> right. close? Huh? Right, exactly. And he, do you know where he gleaned his information? Where? A straw pool, a straw pole at the barber shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. I tell you, those barber shops. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah, this, right. right. So yeah. that's the equivalent of the skin of a hair. Uh, right, right. Two right, votes. Right. Two votes, right, exactly. It's <laughs> happened before, believe me. Oh, you know, right. I can that's imagine. why it's important for everybody to get out and vote. Right. That's right. Um, while we have the time, uh, yeah. why don't you talk a little bit more about um, NorthamptonMedia.com? About NorthamptonMedia.com. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. my goodness. Right. Well, it's been quite uh, an adventure. Yeah. You know? well, why did you decide to launch it? Well, it started out as a, a series of coffeehouse conversations. Mm -hmm. I would say a couple of years ago, a small cohort of us started blogging. There was Paolo Mastrangelo. Uh, Daryl LaFleur, mm -hmm. myself, Paolo and I started producing a radio show okay. on Valley Free Radio called the Community Radio Hour, where we brought public officials in and we discussed controversial issues. Mm -hmm. We started podcasting and blogging the show. Okay. Paolo blogged at the Northamptonist as the Northamptonist. Really? And he was very influential. Mm. Uh, his blog was always very um, innovative and creative. There was a real learning community of bloggers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just started saying to each other, you know, let's, maybe we should try to do something that's a little more multifaceted. Right. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. You know, I just decided to do it. <laughs> and you At did? a certain point, develop NorthamptonMedia.com. Right. Right, yeah. And got a lot of help along the way. Oh, I can imagine. And it, we have a long way to go, too. It's like there's so much potential mm. with this site. There's so much potential. But, you know, at this point, we've just been covering the Northampton election season, so Higgins, here we go. Oh. Speaking of Northampton election. Firstly, 360. Adams, 382, Narkowitz, 489, Silva, 348, Duval, 5A, 5B, no, 5B, excuse me, 5B, Duval, 212, Flynn, 445, Schroeder, 120, 
Young 215. And yes, 261, no, 433. Wow. Mm. The landfill question. Mm. Okay, so with those results, Claire Higgins extending her lead by about another 80 votes. That's still pretty close. That's still close. But what's fascinating to me is that the landfill question and seems to be going down in flames. I hope you guys can hear me because I can't hear you. <laughs> right. Oh. It's wild. Um, just out of curiosity, can you hear us, Dave? I guess not. So I guess we'll, David can't hear yeah, us, right? Um, I'd like David we'll, to give us a little bit of an update about the uh, school committee race. Right. Right, where, you know, there are, what? Uh, There's, uh, It's hard to keep a, track a of everything, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right, one of them's the incumbent, you know. Right. It's like really the only contested seats in the That's, school committee uh, yeah, race are the at-large, right? Okay, so yeah. Dave, can you hear us now? Hey, I can hear you guys. Okay, good. Um, what's going on, uh, what's the, what, what's it like over there at, at City Hall now? Is it, well, uh, it's getting, getting louder. Tense? Yeah, it's getting louder and louder. I did see Michael Bardsley walk in, and hopefully we'll be able to talk to him soon. I see him uh, kind of behind the camera a little bit there. Um, it's very bright in here. It's very hot. We have some school committee results here, and just taking a quick glance at it, it does look like Michael Flynn and James Young are the two leaders, and by quite a bit. I think we have some more results here. All right. We have 1A. Higgins. Adams 190. Adams 190. Narco looks 240. Silva 119. Silva 119. Maureen Carney. Flynn, 192, Schroeder, 59, Young, 112. Yes, 111, no, 237. Higgins, 267, Bardsley, 122. Adams is 199. Narkowitz is 272. Young, 24. Yes is 108, no is 224. Okay guys, so I think we're gonna get some new batteries in this mic and then we'll give you the tallies. All right, well, <laughs> you do that and uh <laughs> David's we'll having be. a technical. <laughs> He's having, it's having a technical. Right. Well, let's talk a little bit about media, media production, new media production. You know, here he is in a situation where he's having to put new batteries into his microphone. Now, we were all taught as we went through our NCTV training that right. there are three stages of uh, pre production, production, and, and post production. And pre production is the most it's important the most part. Important. You got to be ready. You charge your batteries That's before right. you leave. That's right. right. You got to be ready. It's hard to remember sometimes all That's of those right. little details that go oh, into absolutely. producing the news yeah. as a multimedia news producer. Absolutely, but that's you know right. what? I what? bet you if anybody can do stuff on the fly, that's right. David it's can. David Packman, that's right. right. He's, he's very good. He right. seems like an on the fly kind of he guy. He is. He's our man on the floor. He City is. <laughs> he is. He's doing a good job out there it's too, great. isn't he? You know, and it's exciting to me to see all of these new media collaborations too. You know, yeah. it's like here's NCTV working with Northampton Media, working with mm -hmm. Midweek Politics. Back to David Packman. Going right back to him. Yeah. Parsley 374. Adams 378, Narkowitz 359, Silva 211. The Ward 3 Council seat, Packman 275, Plasman 331. Uh, 
uh, Duval, 162. Yes, 201, no, 79. 3B, Higgins, 246, Bardsley, 300. Adams, 282, Dark, 245. So Angela Plasman has one in Ward 3. Oh. oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Angela Plasman won the Ward 3 yes, race. That is news. That is That news. is big news. So we have our first uh, official winner. We do. Angela Plasman has defeated Steve Bob Reckman. Okay, more results. At 217, Schroeder at 92, Young at 134. Yes, 136, no, 334. So it's very quiet in here, sudden. Yeah. I, I think people are a little bit stunned that Angela Plasman has won the Ward 3 race. Right. Yeah, people <laughs> like it's such a landslide. Right. People seem stunned in here, for sure. Right. <laughs> well, wow. congratulations, Angela Plasman. That's right. Congratulations, Angela. Right. And, and who and, well, knows? I wonder what Bob Reckman is going to, you know, do. maybe he'll go back to the Board of Public Works. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. Wow. He's knowledgeable. He, was, he served on the Board of Public Works uh, he? before he was a city councilor. Yes. Okay. Yes, indeed. And he's been involved in the city for a number of years. And, many and here's Angela right. Plasman. Right. Here we go. Okay. Congratulations. Great. Okay, and we have the first, the first decided race today. Right. Okay, we have more election results here. We have more results here. Ward 5A, Higgins 377, Bardsley 342, Adams 342, Narquitz 466, Silver 5. Two fifty-six, no seventy-six. Okay, so that's all the results for now. Great. Hmm. So we'll get back to you. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. And it, wow. I'm still stunned by that. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like the crowd is out there, too. I think so, too, you right? Know, but because Bob Reckman has been such a player. Right. You know, in the city council. You know, he's been involved with the Best Practices Committee. He's been very visible. Okay, I think right. he's got more um, information for us. Um, we'll be going back to, to Dave in just a second. Okay. But um, So tell me a little bit more about Bob. About Bob Reckman? About Bob Reckman, he yeah. has He's been a very active city councilor. Mm -hmm. He's been involved in a number of committees. Um, he's uh, on the advisory committee for the Exit 19 expansion. Oh, wow. Right, okay. yeah, that's another so, thing. Uh, it'll be interesting. A, that, yeah. Yeah, to, to find out why voters in Ward 3 uh, uh, chose Plasman. But see, Plasman's a Bardsley supporter, and she's, she's running on a transparency and government platform. Right. Um, so, well, okay. Yeah, yeah well. right. Hey, Dave. Uh, we can't hear you. No um, audio. 
And it looks like, folks, he'll be, um, we'll be getting our first interview with um, one of the winners, Angela Plasman. Hey, Dave, you, can you hear us? Hey guys, I'm here with Angela Plasman. The, I think the first decided race of election 2009 in Northampton. What'd you do right in this campaign? Reached out to the community. I think I showed them how passionate I am about the community, how much I care, bringing a very personal side. I'm very excited to work hard for Ward 3, and uh, the real work is about to begin. I'll tell you, I live in Ward 3, so I'm curious, what, what's item number one that's going to happen on day one for you? I'm going to meet with the residents at the Walter Salvo House, and I'm going to I'm going to talk about the pedestrian crosswalk out in the front. I've got concerns about the maintenance of the of the buildings. I want to meet with the residents on the proposed interchange project for 91. Uh, I want to talk about the uh, the zoning changes that may occur over Bridge Street. I, I'm going to work very hard, and I'm excited. Okay, Angela Plasman, congratulations. And we'll be back to you guys with more results soon. Thanks, Dave. Well, well, that's exciting. Fresh blood in Ward Three. Exactly, <laughs> and I, you know, I live in Ward Three yes. myself, so yes, right. you know, it's, you know, the Exit 19 highway expansion is another one of my it, favorite topics. It's one right? of those issues. <laughs> oh, it's another yes. gnarly, gnarly topic with a long history. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, let me just remind yeah. the folks out there, yeah. especially if you just joined us, we are covering. Uh, Northampton's Election Day 2009 live here at Northampton Community TV. Uh, we're going to go right back to City Hall. We have Dave out there, and um, he's been bringing us results all night. Here we go. 494, Bardsley 350, Adams 479, Narkowitz 627, Silva 212. And one Schroeder forty Young two forty seven Yes two sixty seven No sixty five Okay guys so David Narkowitz clearly way ahead for city councilor at large and Jesse Adams in second place and every ward seems to pretty much mirror that and the numbers at this point are mounting oh wow um what do you think so, of that jesse adams yeah jesse adams i think he's going to be a great city councilor i think so he's, too oh he's right here next to me and he is doing something on his phone and i'm sure doing all sorts of math uh <laughs> right, and he, seems, exactly. he seems happy right now and david narkowitz in here somewhere are also way way ahead at this point i don't think i'm making anything up if i say that is it me or is jesse sweating there is, tell him he can relax there i think he's jesse you know. sweating a little bit he yeah. seems to be mostly clean shaven and I, I mean i'm telling you he's keeping his cool as much as as much as anybody here all right, and so at some point you said you're going to maybe uh, get some comments from uh, David, from, from David Narkowitz. We already spoke okay. to David. Yes, Narkowitz. we already spoke to David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think well, the thing, the things that you know, Jesse, uh, Jesse Adams and David Narkowitz. Right. They're both That's very right. well dressed. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. A style the, show at City Council with those two. Very stylish. Right. That's yeah. right. Right. And you know the thing, right. I, and you you mentioned, uh, I think you used the term fresh blood earlier. That's right. I think yes. Jesse brings Jesse in some fresh, fresh blood. Jesse represents fresh blood. He's young. Absolutely. He's hip. Uh, yes, exactly. You know, he brings in a young professional yes. um, Absolutely. He's a lawyer, and I have heard people say that Jesse wants to be mayor someday yeah too. i know i kid him all the time yeah, I know. <laughs> you know matter of fact we'll go back out today um and in, in just a second but yeah. um yeah i do i kid him all the time wouldn't that I be call a race would see jesse adam J adams v narkowitz you know absolutely <laughs> that would be you a know. fun one to i can watch, see right? that when's actually. that gonna happen i can see that <laughs> yeah. you know so um anything sticking out to you for you at this time any um surprises or Besides the plasmin, the landfill ballot question is—it's—it just seems to be going down in flames. Yeah. It's that to me is surprising. I thought it would be close. Uh, yes. or, you know, it's very interesting to it me. It is interesting. It'll you be just... interesting to see how the results of this non-binding ballot initiative influence public policy. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go to David. Hey, Dave. What do you got for us? Okay, so we have running totals for mayor right now with two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve precincts in. And the totals are Michael Bardsley, 3755, and Claire Higgins, 4091. 
So about 340 votes separating the two with Claire Higgins ahead right now. Hmm. Okay. Now, which wards and precincts still need to report in? Yeah, so we're that's still waiting point. on uh, 6B and 7A. Okay, because those are going to be um, important wards for Bardsley. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Absolutely. So we'll Absolutely. be back to you as soon as we have those. Okay. Hmm. So, um, wow. Yeah. We're getting, wow. To, we're getting down to the wire here. So the question becomes what happens post election? You know, this has been a bitter and divisive campaign. Right. And um, can they continue to work together after this? Well, they won't have to work together because one of them's going to be gone. That is true. You know, Bardsley yeah. loses, he's gone. I mean, he lost his city council seat. He chose not to run for re election. That is uh, true. And he chose to run for mayor. So mm -hmm. if he loses, the question then becomes what does Michael Bardsley do? Right. You know, and if Claire loses, there's the question too what does Claire Higgins do? Right. So they won't be in a position where they have to work together. <laughs> well, <laughs> which that's is probably a good which thing. Which is probably a good thing. But the, yeah. city, the city does, will remain divided. There are strong divisions in the mm. city, so it um, it's going to be a tough couple of years. Yeah, I can imagine because I mean these issues that um, you know not only the mayors are standing and and talking about, but even the council itself. Sure. Um, you know you do need to move forward on those issues. If not, sure. Um, you know it's it's quote unquote politics as usual. Sure, and this election has done little to heal the legendary breach between uh, Hamp and NoHo. Right. In fact, it's just really right. It just made it much much worse. Put a bigger wedge in it. Right. Put yeah. a bigger wedge. Right. Well. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we'll have Gene Tacy uh, defending. Uh, <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. <laughs> the Ward Six, Ward Seven uh, interests. And yes. again, it, it's really not as simple as that, but. Uh, but there, there are divisions. There are strong divisions. There it's, is. Uh, as witnessed by the C Steve Susco. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, out, uh, outburst, outburst. Right, which was captured on video, yeah. put up on YouTube, went absolutely viral. Steve Susco, I'm mad as heck and I'm not going to take it right, anymore. Exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's right. But you know what? what? It, sound like, it seemed like in this yeah, season that a lot of people felt like that, though. Oh, yeah, very you strongly know. felt um, feelings on both sides. Right, on both sides. On both sides. Yeah, he just yeah. happens to be one who. He Does spoke mind. his mind. He speaks his it was captured mind. on film, and, and now was, he's famous. Right, exactly. Did you capture that? <laughs> no, that wasn't oh, okay, my video. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun, though, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. That's right. City council can be a lot of fun. Right. right. You know, the board of public works can be a lot of fun too, but that's another topic. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> right. You know what I like to do yeah. um, is just remind the folks out there, especially if you're just joining in, we are covering here at Northampton Community Television Studios live coverage of election day 2009 it's close folks you know um i i don't know i think the, um higgins is ahead higgins is ahead but, but we're waiting for 6b and 7a much. to come in right yeah waiting for board 6b and 7a to come in 6b and 7a right exactly shouldn't be too long it's going to be a close one that's right that's right, right. so yep stay tuned folks you don't want to miss this. <laughs> One minute of this exciting coverage. <laughs> That's right. right. That's right. So, oh my goodness. Um, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell I'll tell the folks a little bit about um, Spotlighting Paradise here. And, sure. Um, this I, is the show I, that you produce. This for is the show NCTV. that I produce. Yeah. yeah. And I got to tell you, it's been such a uh, a learning experience and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, the staff here, as you well know, are awesome. They and are. They, they provide so much um, support and resources. Northampton Community Television is a wonderful, wonderful they rock. organization. Don't they, they do. We That's love right. Northampton Community Television. I mean, look, look right. at what we're doing here today. <laughs> the crew here is amazing. Aren't Al they? Williams, the executive director. That's right. We've got uh, Bryn. Bryn, Fant Bryn, Bryn Francis. Francis who, right. That's my guy. Right, exactly. Guy. We've got Ben Brown. That's he's the right. access coordinator. That's, you know, they're like, all our guys. They're just bringing you know, people into the organization. They're in. training people. They're right. doing I'm very happy about it. I mean, we don't have the last job. NCTV. precinct uh -oh, in, wait so a minute. Here um, we go. I'm, it's not over till 6B sings. So is it 6B that we're missing? Yeah, 6B, 7A. But but the numbers look good from our unofficial tallies. Can you tell me a little bit about how you, what you learned from your training? I learned that it's important to get out and be talking to people about what you're doing. And, and I, you know, I think elections are a good thing because they do get people out and talking. This has been the tightest, you know, the most hotly contested race I've had in many years. 
And it, it was a good thing. It was a good thing because it got people active, engaged, involved. It got me out and talking to people. I think it was great. How do devices make those submissions? How do you kind of heal that divide? Uh, I, I'm not clear that there's a divisive on issues with the exception of the landfill. I heard a call for change, but I'm not sure what the differences are on the issue. And I'm going to continue to, to do the work of, 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 of uh, running the city and, and implementing change when change is necessary and listening to people about what their opinions are about the things we need to do. Yeah. I'm so, I have no idea what he wants to do, but I'll certainly be sitting down and talking to him about how he envisions himself uh, contributing to the city. He won't be on the council anymore. So, you know, I, I'm not sure what he wants to do, but I'm happy to talk to him about it. Well, you heard in this election, did it make you change the process? I need to be out about talking about what I'm doing. So a lot of things that I talked about as achievements, people didn't really know about because I haven't been out um, talking about them. So I need to do that. Largely on starting that budget process earlier. Is that something you'll consider? Uh, we started it very early last year, and in fact, we um, had a successful. Not sure that is going to necessarily. I'll take it. You can't start it before you get your state aid numbers. You don't get your state aid numbers till the third week in January. It sounds like that landfill is really going to be the next big thing. I think the next big issue is what, how Northampton is going to deal with its trash. It's a bigger issue than just the landfill. Really, the question is, how are we going to dispose of our trash in a responsible way? Do you, you anticipate winning over any of the people who are so staunchly against you? Or? I have no idea, but there's, I, I have no idea. But, you know, in any election, I, I've ne there's been 35 percent of people that have vote, never voted for me. So. Okay. Wow. Uh, well, that's interesting. That did, did I hear her say that there's no real divisiveness on the issues, I, save for the landfill? Yeah. <laughs> that's an <that's> interesting <laughs> observation. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I don't know about you, but yeah. she's spoken like, um, and I know it's, you know, we still have some numbers coming in, but yes, she's right. speaking like, um, like... Like it's hers. Like it's right. hers. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And she'll have a conversation with Michael Barnes right. as to how he can best contribute to the city. Right. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Yeah. That's, yeah. um... You know, maybe she's she's feeling it. I guess she, uh, you know, that's the sense that I got. That's the sense that I got, too. Well, you know, hey, hmm. the voters do speak. The you know, speak. as they say in sports, right. that's why you ha you play the game. Right, exactly. You know, right. You have to. Exactly. Right. I'm always curious about the residents of Northampton who don't vote. Who are the people who don't vote? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. There are many apolitical people. In fact, there are many people who follow national politics, right. who follow global politics, who are passionate. politics. Right. right. Exactly. But when it comes to local politics, they, they just, involved. they don't get involved and they don't pay attention. That's and right. That's curious that to is, me. Yeah. That's right. That's a conversation that um, right. we should have with those folks. And, and again, well, I would right. include um, the folks in public housing and I would put them into that mix because right, exactly they might want to pay attention to politics but do political figures pay attention to them right exactly you know exactly as opposed to someone right, who's just right. apolitical and just conscious about not being involved right in I know politics. I know plenty of folks who are apolitical right exactly that's right, <laughs> right. that's yeah. right especially here in North especially Hampton. here in North Hampton. right exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah right but so, um, so I, I I guess it won't be long now before, you know, um, we start getting some official numbers coming in. We'll start in. getting official results before too long from David Pakman, our, right. man, our man our, at City Hall. Our man about in City Hall. <laughs> That's right. Uh, That's Mr. Right. Midweek Politics. That's you right. You know, I, I just love that show. Yeah, David you know, Pakman does good work. He's engaging. He's mm -hmm. got that swagger and voice for it as well. He does. He has the radio voice. He has the he? radio <laughs> voice. Speaking of radio voices, uh, we well, we're going to go back to David. Let's Packard. go back to David Packard. All right. right. And he's with. Um, we're absolutely <laughs> live. And I don't know if, are, if we're on. I'm live here with Claire Higgins. You are, so David. Go, about 300 or so votes separating you right now. What about these precincts makes you think that it'll, it'll go one way or another? We have informal numbers from there, and, and uh, so, do, so did the Bardsley campaign. So I think we're both comfortable that, about what we think is going to happen. So I think that what, she, what we're implying here is that we may have a re-election here for Mayor Claire Higgins of Northampton. If that's the case, congratulations. I saw handshaking taking place and a whole to-do was taking place. What's the next move here? Is it the Northampton Brewery? Is it Paradise City Tavern? Is it up to your office? Paradise City Tavern. 
So the Paradise City Tavern, you heard it here, in, unofficially, a re-election for Claire Higgins in Northampton. Wow, okay. Oh, wow, well that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your reactions, man. Congratulations, Mayor. Claire Higgins. That's it's right. It's been a tough race. It has been. <laughs> it's a tough race, and, and um, there's a lot of work to be done. It, she, it certainly right, is. Exactly. You know, the budgetary issues are going to be tough ones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like the landfill. The landfill. Exit 19, uh, the Hilton Garden Inn Hotel. Wow. Right. Implementing the recommendations of the Best Practices that's Committee. Right. Transparency. Right. Transparency in city government. Oh, that's, that's right. right. That's, that's a key one. That's because, a key I mean, one, if right. that really, let's yeah. just say ideally right. that yeah. happens, then. Right. Some of those other issues, you know, there'll right. be a lot more inclusiveness Absolutely. and a lot more yeah. um, people involved in the right. process. And there will be a shift of power on the city council side. Yes. There will be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we'll have uh, Gene, I, I, what, Seven hasn't come in, but I'm, maybe I'm speaking prematurely. Right. And Angela Plasman. Angela that's Plasman. Right, exactly. Jesse, uh, Adams. Jesse Adams. That's right. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. Because the current city council, there, it's full of competent people, but there have been criticisms that the city council has tended to be, and perhaps I'm using too strong a word, mm -hmm. a rubber stamp for the mayor. Right, exactly. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. So, right. uh, so we'll see some changes this. I don't think that's too this, strong of a yeah, word. Yeah, we'll see some changes this time. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be interesting. Uh, so while we're waiting um, for some more results to come in, or the final results to come in, I should say, um, I just want to uh, continue just talking about Northampton Community oh. Television here. Oh yeah, Northampton um, Community Television. Who's actually television. sponsoring um, well, this live? That's the thing. I think coverage. a lot of people don't understand the amount of work that goes behind a television production. I know. For instance, when Northampton Community Television broadcast live from the Northampton High School, oh my They goodness. were there all, all day, day long. long. I know. Right. They worked through a host of technical problems. Mm -hmm. There's like you know the, there was very poor documentation for the wiring right. over it, and and they reverse engineered the. They whole thing it. over the course of the day. They're right. like super remarkable work. That's right. Remarkable they are work. some yeah. awesome Northampton. guys. Send them money. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right For right. those of you out right. there <laughs> who appreciate <laughs> the, the level of programming that you see on Northampton Community TV, right. donate to Northampton Community TV. They've brought all of these mayoral TV. debates to the, to That's the to right. people. They That's kept right. the people informed. They sure did. They were out there working right. Right. nonstop. Right. And I have a collaborative working relationship with Northampton Community Television at NorthamptonMedia.com because I bring the stream of their web production into NorthamptonMedia.com. Right. So if you go to NorthamptonMedia.com and you click on the NCTV tab, yep. you'll see all of the videos, all of the television shows that are produced by Northampton Community right. Television that they put up on their web stream. Wow. Right. That's so, awesome. Instance, that's right, exactly. All of the city council meetings. The city meetings, council meetings. Right, all of the debates and, and some of the work that they do with uh, WRSI, the river. With, right, where they the, have the river. Cover, They'll right, actually yeah. even see my show on right. there. They're spotlighting paradise. That's, that's right. Because um, they right. just put my stuff online uh, right. very and recently. And Community Television, which I've right. Been they're developing pro procedures and protocols for streamlining the process by which yes. they put things up to the web. That's so awesome. they're putting stuff up to the web faster and faster and that's faster. That's right. Right. And that's then right. Uh, people like me can grab the embed code and, like, you know, like it's, feature that in Northampton Media. It's great. It, it's, it's great. It's absolutely it's like the potential amazing. for media collaboration That's right. is, is so it, wondrous. It's key. Yes. It's key. So we'll go back out to David, David Pakman. Pakman. Uh, we're not getting you, Dave. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey, so we can unofficially announce city council at large, David Narkowitz in first place and Jesse Adams in second place. We're still waiting on results officially, which I think we're getting right now. And this should do it for the entire election here. Okay. Okay, right. folks, so we're starting to wind down. Thank you. 7A, Higgins 404, Bargley 392, Adams 373, Narkowitz 467, Silva 296. Ward 7 Council Seat, Jacobs 349, Tacey 410. Wow, that was close. Mm. Duval 171, Flynn 534, Schroeder 140, Young 193. Yes is 291, no is 424.
Okay, so there is only one ward, or one precinct rather, that we're waiting on at this point, which is 6B. All right. So the Ward 7, that went to Tacey, but it was uh, very close. Very, very close. I was surprised. Mm. Right, I was surprised because Deb Jacobs waged a very quiet campaign, mm -hmm. and I was a little concerned. I thought to myself, come on, Deb, get out there and campaign. Right. Right, that was closer than I thought. So... I th closer than I thought it would be. So I guess we've got Gene Tacey. Yeah? Yeah, as a city councilor. That's right. Well, that'll be exciting. Yeah, that'll be exciting. <laughs> he, like I said, he serves as like a city councilor already, already. in my mind. You right, know? Exactly. exactly. I mean, <laughs> and he's cordial. You know, I, I, I like his... Um, his way. His, his way, yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. I'm right. sure not everybody would agree with you, but... Uh, yeah, well, I, that's just I me. I like Gene, right, yeah. Yeah, he's a right. nice guy. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. highly... He's, incredibly knowledgeable. Yeah, and he cares about the city. He cares deeply he about cares the city. He cares deeply about the city. He cares deeply about the city. That's you know? right. And, That's uh, right. He's got a terrific voice, too. Yes. Now, he's got a great voice for radio. He, he does. He should have a radio show. He Gene should Tacey. have. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Are you um, partying tonight? Um, at the <laughs> Paradise City, I may stop by and have yeah, a beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's been a it's it's been a quite a it's been a rough road it's here. Been a, yeah, it yeah. really really has. It, it has. has been. It has. Right, and of course the drinking liberally people will be over at the Paradise That's right. City Tavern. Right. Now yes. is that different than the green D green drinks? Right. Exactly. I believe yes. Okay. Yes, green right. drinks and drinking liberally they're different. They're different. They might drink Kinda together. Kind of sound time right. Okay. Right. 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 <laughs> exactly. Right. Probably like, yeah. like Venn diagrams. There's probably <laughs> some overlap. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Um, Folks out there, um, we are waiting for just the final results of this um, election season. You're watching it live right here on Northampton Community TV. My name is Henry White. I'm joined here with Mary Serez from NorthamptonMedia.com. And, you know, that's just one of the things. She's, she's an amazing person as well. She's... <laughs> I see. I, I have to have so you on my show. That. Yeah, that would be fun. We I got to get you right. on yeah. Spotlighting Paradise. That's right. And maybe you should write for Northampton Media. Or do that, some production. Well, that would absolutely. Be great. I would love That's to. Right. Form yeah. a collaborative well, you, media relationship. You might, you might want to know what my issues are first. That's though. true. And I yeah. would <laughs> want to know whether you, you, you know the proper <laughs> use of the semicolon. Right. You right. know, yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we kind of came full circle here today. We met. Quite a few months back um, at a Chamber of Commerce event. We met at a Chamber of Commerce event? It was Commerce a North event? Hampton Chamber of Commerce event in, but it was, it in, was in Deerfield. It was in Deerfield, that's right. Exactly. I remember that. And I actually I remember became that a little clearly. gentleman for you that that's night right. because someone S bumped you. Right. And spilled, spilled my drink yeah, all over me. All right. over you. And I was very upset. I could tell you were right. upset. And right. I had to, you know, I didn't want you to go off because you, you had a look on you about you know like so i <laughs> i, I said right, right, yeah. let me replace this drink for you and we actually had a conversation and we met. did that's how yeah, we met and you told me that you work in the field of organizational development that's right, right. Exactly. that's right exactly and, um, those chamber events can be a lot of fun they are a lot of they fun i look forward fun. to them I actually do free 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 oh, free, right free hors d'oeuvres, yeah, right, and exactly. you, you get to network Music, and meet you people get to, like yourself. Yeah, rub shoulders, right? And That's right. Rub elbows. What is it? You uh, rub shoulders, yeah, you rub, you rub elbows, elbows right? and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. Well, you know what? Speaking yeah. of um, networking events, um, there is an event that Northampton Community TV is sponsoring on November 9th. Do tell. It is a members' night. Uh, I think it's their first e ever. Yes. Members and Producers Night. On November 9th? On November 9th at 6.30 p.m. I see. At the Media Education Foundation. Is there going to be free food? I would think so. You know <laughs> right, what? Yeah. I, we need if to ask not, Al that. To we need that to, happen, right, right. right. Exactly. I think, well, that is dinner time, as I told Al, <laughs> right. you know, in the yes. past, that, right. you know, that's dinner time. Yeah, yeah. But I want to encourage you folks out there. Um, you know, join us at Members Night. I mean, that's how I got involved. And we're going to go, actually, we're going to uh, run something that Al will talk about it right now. Um, so the thing is, okay, I think um, oh, here's we're going back, back to date. We're back. Okay. 
Hey guys, so out of 19,321 registered voters, our tally is around 84, 8,500 voters, which is less than a 50% turnout, quite a bit less uh, for Northampton. This is still waiting on Ward 6B, which is going to be, uh, you know, a few hundred more, anywhere from four to 800 more. So under a 50% turnout of registered voters at this point. Mm, thanks, wow. What, what do you think of that, Mayor? Is it, you think that speaks to the apoliticalness that you, you know, were speaking there, to earlier? There or? are people across this planet who fight, mm. who would fight for the right to be able to vote I in know, a democratic election. I, know. I mean, I know that might sound trite, and you hear it all the time, but, but it still true. astounds me. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like participate. Participate, you know? right? It's like this is it. This right. is your community, right? And the issues are important. Very important. They very are important. That's right. People say to me, "Oh, well, I'm not that interested. It doesn't affect me. It does affect you." Absolutely. You know, Mass Highway is proposing a, a, a huge interchange That's at Exit right. 19. It's an important issue. That's right. The landfill expansion. It's an important issue. Oh yeah. The Hilton Garden Inn Hotel and all of these urban design issues. They're very they're important very issues important. that affect That's everybody. Right. And and it's usually the ones yeah. who who don't participate are the first ones to complain. To complain. Oh, I didn't know that that was happening. Right, well, exactly. if you'd well, been reading the newspaper, visiting Northampton Media and going to public right. meetings, perhaps you would perhaps have known. Perhaps you will. Well, but you know what, it's, it's, it's the job of the city councilors, though, too, to reach out. Absolutely. Right. That's right. Because, right. I mean, yeah. and, and if you yeah. really look at it, I mean, they yeah. actually work for the people. The people. You know, That's and right. I don't think people yeah. really grasp that concept. That's you right. Know, you elect those folks, and they actually right. work for you. And you can call your city council. You can call them. That's you can right. Some of them even have office hours. That's right. And some city councilors have their own websites. That's right. Right, exactly. Right. Yes, yeah, some so. are more proactive than others. Absolutely. Right, and, right. But that's where the people come in to right. say, you know, yes. this is what we'd like in right. in our democratic process right you know and we'd like more open in, uh, and inclusive, some, government. inclusive open government open inclusive government, that's right. government transparent government that's been an overarching theme across I, this that's whole right. election i think we ought right. to keep them to that i, I think, think from so. your you right. know, media, um, you know, aspect and... That's right. It's the job of the media it's to the hold job of the media. To the fire. That's right. That's <laughs> Regardless right. Regardless of who's elected. Absolutely. Right. So. so, anyway, we were talking, um, and we're still waiting on the final results from uh, Ward 6B, I believe, but mm -hmm. we were talking, and um, yeah. I was mentioning member night um, oh, that at Northampton NCTV. at right. NCTV is doing. It's their first ever... Yeah. Members night and they're going to be educating uh, members on uh, different issues around, you know, how you produce a, a show and sure. some of the legal issues around it. Oh, I know I'm interested in I'm that. I'm interested in that too. The great thing about Northampton Community Television, as you well know, mm -hmm. is that you can come here and pay a nominal fee Absolutely. to join and you can learn how to, the first thing you learn is how to operate television cameras, right. how to set up a shot, all the technical aspects. You can take courses and learn Final Cut Pro. Yes, oh right? yeah. Right. Which is, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can learn how I'm, to operate I'm the control still learning. Room. I'm right, still exactly, that. exactly. <laughs> so, so you know, these you would you might pay hundreds of dollars to take these courses at oh, a community absolutely. college to learn Final Cut that's Pro, right. to learn film production. You can learn that all right you here learn, at Northampton right. Community Television, and they that's do right. ask people to volunteer, absolutely, to spend a little time behind the camera at public meetings. And it only serves you. Um, that's right, exactly. To get better, exactly. You know? And exactly. for you folks out there, if you ever yeah. watch our city uh, uh, council meetings. Mm -hmm. You might even see myself um, there um, helping out on, from time to time. I do that because I did go through the courses here, and um, it's my way of giving back and, and getting my feet um, and learning more and more and getting more comfortable behind the camera. That's right, and you often see Ira McKinley behind the camera. That's right. Right, That's yeah. right, and you yeah. got Alexis and Dakota. It's, it's a That's whole right. bunch of Fantastic um, crowd at Northampton crew Community that Television. just volunteer here. And right. actu in actuality, they have, um, I'm not sure if they still have slots open, but give them a call or check the website. They have a training coming up fairly soon. That's right. Um, I would encourage you folks, that's how I got involved. That's, that's how, how I got Mary involved. got involved. Right. Yeah. I gotta warn you though, once you get involved, if you feel <laughs> if you get in like I did, you <laughs> there's go, no turning there's back. no turning back. <laughs> you know, it's only right. one way up. So. Right. It's like yeah, well, everybody should be a media producer. That's right, right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And and you can be as creative as you wanna be. That's right. You that's know. right. Yes, absolutely. So I hope to see you all um, next week, next uh, Tuesday I believe, or next mm -hmm. Monday.
at November on November 9th at 6:30. Absolutely. So. So. Going back to oh, oh here back. we go back to Dave. Yes. How you doing, hey guys? Matt? It's going well. I don't know how things are going back in the studio, but it's definitely starting to clear out here David. a little, even though we haven't yet gotten official, official results. But what I can tell you is, uh, as far as the mayor's race goes, um, Claire Higgins has been reelected. We are waiting on Ward 6B for all of these. But at this point, the numbers are, uh, unless every single person in Ward 6B, and maybe even some people voting twice, voted for Michael Bardsley, Claire Higgins will be reelected. Mm -hmm. City Councilor at large, Jesse Adams and David Narkowitz. Councilor Ward 1, which was a race that recently got a little bit of press because of uh, a Bill Dwight, Andrew Vidal McNair controversy, has gone overwhelmingly to Maureen wow. Carney. Not, not really even close at this point. Uh, Councilor Ward 3, uh, kind of an upset. We have the challenger, Angela Plasman, who beat Robert, uh, Robert Reckman. Um, in Councilor Ward 7, Gene Tacey did win. In the school committee, we're pretty comfortable even with one ward, or one precinct rather, still to go, saying that Michael Flynn and James Young have been the two elected to school committee at large. And on the non-binding question about the landfill, maybe by a two to one margin, those reading no have, uh, have won. So that's where we're at right now, less than 50% voter turnout altogether, and still waiting on 6B to finalize these results. Hmm. Wow. David, I see the, or, the organizer of Water Not Waste behind you. Um, uh, Adam wearing, Cohen, yes. Her name is Mimi there. Odgers. I'm sorry? Her, her name is Mimi Odgers. You might want to talk with her. In the red shirt here. Yes, she was the, she's the organizer of the anti-landfill um, group called Water Not Waste, who spearheaded gotcha. this ballot question. Well, she's involved right now in a conversation with uh, another two Michael Bardsley supporters. It's unclear how upset yeah. they are tonight. I, I did have an informal talk with them, and they said kind of a split decision. Mm. They, did, right. uh, they did have some favorable results for city councilor, but obviously not happy about the mayoral race results. But they are uh, being very political and can't, keeping their cool, so to speak, not getting too bent out of shape over it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So. Um, one thing one thing we should mention here just again is this non-binding question it is non-binding so it's right. a, a lot of voters not thinking about it as an opinion question but thinking about it as a kind of a policy whatever the result something is going to happen um, that's not the case and a lot of people even coming out of the voting booth didn't know that when they voted so definitely something to think about when it comes to these non-binding questions right does everybody understand what non-binding means right exactly right exactly exactly yeah I think that's something uh, maybe to talk about on midweek politics. It may be. It may very well be. <laughs> um, great. Wow. So we've got what? Maureen Carney. Yeah. David Narkowitz, Jesse Adams, uh, David Murphy, Angela Plasman, Jean Tacey, Marianne Labarge, uh, Paul Spector. Who am I missing? Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh! I There's feel like it's like the the the, uh, the elves. No, the dwarves. The, right. That's right. <laughs> right exactly. Um, Geez, you, you got me. It's uh, I'm, I'm yeah. throwing a blank here for a second. Maybe oh, don't worry about it. Um, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get, we'll get. We'll think about it after we have our beer at uh, the Paradise City. Right, 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 exactly. But right, maybe we should um, at some point just uh, to let the folks out there know. Right. Um, uh, maybe we can do a recap for the folks before. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, so a very, very interesting. Going back to Pac-Man. We're going Go back, back to Pac-Man. Pac right, yeah. So we are, hey guys, we're talking with Mimi Odgers of uh, Water Not Waste, and your involvement with this non-binding question was on which side? Um, well, we were, we were the ones responsible for getting it on the ballot. Um, we went out our group and we collected um, over about 2,000 signatures and we got it on the ballot. And our goal, our hope is to not expand the landfill over the um, Barnes Aquifer. And we were thrilled that uh, the citizens have essentially agreed. We haven't gotten the last ward, but essentially we have um, won every single ward. So even in wards where um, different counselors or uh, the mayor and how the different races went, we still came out with the majority of votes. So it looks to, see, to me that the citizens are, you know, understanding this issue more and saying, you know, we don't want to go ahead with this. We want to. So when you were working on this issue in the lead up to the election and then you see some of these numbers, 111 to 237, more than two to one in some cases, did you expect that in any of these wards or were you acting as if it was going to be a 51-49 thing? We were working on uh, a shoestring budget. We had uh, about, I mean, I think less than 10 signs up out into the, uh, into the community. 
Um, we did not have any money for advertising. There, we had written a uh, editorial, guest editorial to the Gazette, which they did not print. Um, and we also had to compete against what? front page articles in the Gazette that said things that uh, we would maybe argue weren't completely factual. Okay. And, uh, yeah. There was a lot of, with that, we, I was fearful that enough people, and, and also with the mayor's website saying there were no health risks, and in a lot of the debates, um, you know, there was a lot of questions about the, the landfill issue, and I was concerned that people would perhaps keep that rhetoric, not dig a little further. So um, I'm happy that people, the truth won out. I mean, there's no lie in the fact that it's going over an aquifer, and, you know, the truth, people, people respond to the truth, I think. So uh, on another note, wearing a Michael Bardsley for mayor pin, I'm guessing the results there are not what you expected. Um, in a race where so many people couldn't tell the difference between either of the candidates on policy, what do you think in the end ended up swinging it away from the candidate you supported? Um, I think that Mayor Higgins run, ran an incredible campaign. Um, I don't quite know what might have swung it one way or the other. I think that um, I think Michael uh, is phenomenal. I think that he's been a wonderful public servant, and I think that the um, I'm, I'm devastated that he won't be our next mayor. Um, Will Northampton survive without? Uh, yes, but it'll be hurt because he was an incredible public servant, and I'm hoping that he will, in some capacity, continue to serve the city because he's, you know, he's been an amazing. He listens to the people. He helps to figure out how to get different parties to work together. I mean, he was very. Um, he, he had a lot of good ideas for the landfill. He said, let's slow down. Let's put on a yellow light. It's going to close for a while. Let's think of new ways. Um, you know, Nantucket moved to zero waste just so because they were going to have to ship their garbage, you know, out of the, you know, back over to the mainland. And they put it, put in a huge production or program to do move to zero waste. They now have only 8% of their trash that goes into the landfill. Well, we've been speaking with Mimi Odgers, water not waste, happy about the not binding question results, not so happy about the mayoral election. Thanks for talking to us today. Okay, thank you. And we'll go back to you guys. All right. So let's look at the city council. Okay. okay it's still going to be tilted toward Higgins, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have Narkowitz, okay, Carney, Narkowitz, Adams, Murphy, Plasman, Tacey, Labarge, Specter, and Schwartz, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Now, Carney, she's a Higgins supporter. Narkowitz is a Higgins supporter. Um, Murphy is a Higgins supporter. Specter, Schwartz, and Carney. I think that we can pretty much expect that. Right. Um, the uh, opposition of uh, Slate will be Labarge, Tacey, and Plasman. Mm -hmm. Adams, he'll be the coin flip. So right. Far. So she mm -hmm. will still have a strong city council behind her. So if any one of the um, traditional Higgins supporters gains a more independent voice, right. then we'll see Thumb movement, right. motion, right. real conflict. Well, right. perhaps not conflict, but discussion. But discussion, right. right. Yes. Or, or right. at yes. least, you know, right. some various opinions. Right, exactly. The, we won't, see, we, won't see things, we won't see things just getting pushed through. Right. Right, right. yeah. Which yeah. is really what the people want. I mean, It's they a little want... hard to say which people. <laughs> right. Because I've talked to some people who say that they really, really trust Mayor Higgins. Right. And that, uh, that the lack of discussion and discourse and disagreement on mm -hmm. the city council is a marker of their trust and mm. their faith in her leadership. Whereas, of course, the people who disagree with her or the people who would like to see other options discussed are perennially frustrated. Right. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. So let yeah. me ask you this. What? Do you, let's talk about change. Because sure. that was uh, a, a word used a lot nationally. Sure, that um, was the Obama that mantra. That was the Obama right, mantra. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that was, you know, um, Michael Barsley used that, that sure. term. Sure, absolutely. Um, do you think the lack of change, um, in this election is a reflection on the, the folks in Northampton not being open to change or I uh, think that people might be a little bit frightened we're 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 right. we're running into some very difficult uh, economic times right. and people yeah. see that Claire yeah. Higgins has such a fantastic grasp of, of numbers mm -hmm. of, of taking care of budgets she has these connections at the state level right. so I believe there may have been a certain amount of anxiety about changing horses in midstream right. yeah. it's a little hard to say was this election a referendum on change perhaps so perhaps so perhaps so mm -hmm. you know well, what does that mean though? Well, what, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> right yeah. right right well it, it it will definitely be interesting it will be very it would, interesting it definitely and you know. Well, we'll lose Gene Tacey at public comment session. 
As that's right. Council, right. That's yeah, right. Somebody's going to have to fill those shoes. Somebody's <laughs> going to have to fill those shoes, and right. let's hope you know there's someone out there. And right. Um, and so much depends too upon the committee structures. Who gets appointed to which committees within the city council? Because so much of the work of the city council gets done at the subcommittee level. Absolutely. But you don't see that don't, on NCTV. That's right. We don't right. see that. Yes. Right. right. You know, through Northampton Media, right. you know, as we develop and grow, right. we hope to have people covering these subcommittee meetings, like EDLU, which is what. Uh, uh, economic Development, Land Use, and Housing. It's right. a very powerful committee. Mm -hmm. You know, the Public Safety Committee. Uh, right. There are a number of very, very powerful committees on the City Council where the real work gets done. Right, and they're so, public. Right. Those are public they records. They are public meetings. Public yes, meetings, they are. but a lot of people don't attend. And I mean, they're, well, they happen have lives. To, right, I mean, right, people <laughs> have lives and, and things like that. Right, right. right. But um, I, I think you make a great point yeah. where, you know, the, that's where a lot of the real work that's or where a lot the nitty -gritty of the, the nitty-gritty stuff gets done towards decisions. That's right. And we get it, mm -hmm. or the public gets it. Right. Well, right. The, it's almost like the city council meetings are almost the tip of the iceberg. Right, exactly. Right, right, right. 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 And that's why it's important for those folks to, to come to those city meetings, though, and let their voices let be heard. Let their voices be heard. You that's know? right. That's, that's right. right. And I'm not sure that many people really know that, that you can attend a city council meeting, mm -hmm. and before every city council meeting, there's a public comment period where you can go, and you've got three minutes. Right. You can address the city council. About anything you want. Right, yes. It's, it's it doesn't have to be about what's on the agenda items for that's that right. evening, It's a real right? soapbox, isn't it? You know? It can <laughs> it's be. A lot that's of fun. right. That's right. <laughs> right. You know what I want to talk about um, real quickly is... What? And they gave us some numbers that yeah. it, it seemed like it was less than 50 percent of the voters. Of the yeah. voters, we're going to Dave. Yeah. We're oh, we're going to be reading. Oh, okay. okay. Great. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't you um, do the honors of reading the? Okay. Uh, 13 of 14 precincts reporting in the mayoral race: Claire Higgins, 4,495; Michael Bardsley, 4,147. City Council at Large, Jesse M. Adams and David J. Narkowitz have won. Uh, City Council Ward 1, Maureen T. Carney, 853, Andrew J. Vidal McNair, 364. Maureen Carney is the winner. Ward 3, uh, Robert Reckman, 508. Angela Plasman, 576. All precincts reporting Angela Plasman has won the Ward 3 City mm. Council race. Ward 7, Deborah Jacobs, 731. Jean Tacy, 936. Jean Tacy is our new Ward 7 Councilor. School Committee at Large. Um, four candidates for two seats. Michael B. Flynn and James J. Young are the winners. Shall the city of Northampton expand the landfill over the Barnes Aquifer? No. That's it for now, huh? Wow. So there you have it, folks. <laughs> we have... <laughs> the voters have spoken. The voters have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an exciting... It, it's, it's been an exciting evening. It, it has been. It's been a lot of fun doing this, It's Henry. been a lot of fun. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 um, I appreciate doing this with you. Yeah, that's I, right. I learned a lot. Hanging out at the uh, NCTV studio. That's right. Talking heads. Talking heads, <laughs> talking, heads talking politics, that's right. uh, which yeah. is I'm, I'm always up for. That's right. You know? And, you know, there's a city council meeting this Thursday. Seven o'clock, council That's chambers, right. so let's it, go. It certainly <laughs> is. You know what? We're probably going to, let's go back out to Dave and see sure what thing. he's up to yeah. now. I'm sure they're starting to file out of City Hall. Sure, yeah. Um, but uh, we want to check in with Dave and see how he's doing out there. Hey, Dave, you're, they're starting hey. to file out of That's right, people there, starting huh? to file out. There's probably only about, I don't know, 25 people left here. And I recognize some of them. I see Jerry Budger here and Joel Spiro with his Claire for Mayor sticker here, and Jim Levy in the back, and uh, Mike Anmuth is here, who's been tallying votes for us tonight, um, and you know the entire NCTV crew is here. To sum up, we've had a re-election for Claire Higgins. We're still waiting on numbers from Ward 6B. 
but uh, the, the numbers are adding up in a way that makes it so that she certainly, we can safely say, has won re-election. For city councilors at large, Jesse Adams and David Narkowitz. Um, in Ward 1, Maureen Carney won uh, probably by more than a two-to-one margin over Andrew Vidal-McNair. Uh, in Ward 3, Angela Plasman winning. And in Ward 7, Gene Tacey. For school committee at large, Michael Flynn and James Young, which I know uh, Mary just recently gave the most updated numbers. And on the non-binding question about the landfill, those reading no, winning close to a two to one margin, uh, or maybe 55, 45, kind of taking an overview of it. So I'm not completely sure on why we haven't gotten 6B in yet. There is some activity going on, and hopefully those numbers are coming in. Uh, and, and we'll have those back to you guys. Do you have some of the totals so far on counselors at large? We don't have the, the totals to date here. Uh, we do actually, and uh, Mary just uh, oh, we don't. I'm sorry. Don't Not the councillors at large. I, <laughs> Speak for no, yourself. No, we didn't have it. Right. I know. I know. Well, <laughs> right we knew now. who won, but we didn't have, have the, numbers. the numbers. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just taking a look at it, it, David Narkowitz, I think in the end, will have a very healthy vote total um, and kind of halfway between David and Kathleen Silva, third in this race, will be Jesse Adams. In, in several precincts, David Narkowitz with uh, over 600 votes really solidly ahead um, and I think no surprise in that race that right. he uh, his campaign was very strong from the start very strong campaign materials and outreach and I don't think anybody was surprised with that right what's the feeling about uh, Jesse Adams uh yeah, well, Jesse just left, and I know his dad and brother and whole, close to his whole family were here, and they are also heading over to Paradise City Tavern. I think only a coincidence that his victory party will be in the same place as Mayor Claire Higgins is. Right. I don't, I don't know that they were uh, too, uh, uh, that they were working together on too many issues in the lead up to this election, as, as you know. Right. Uh, so they have pretty much cleared out and a really strong showing. And again, his campaign was very strong all over Northampton. Yeah. Tons of events, a lot of lawn signs, even though you don't really want to go by lawn signs. So really not a surprise there. I think most of the attention here was on the mayor's race, and it was really close up until uh, really the last two or three precincts and still missing one. Great. Well, that's David Pacman via Skype right. reporting at City Hall. That's right. It's another example of, of solving a technology problem. You know? Right. How, how to bring live coverage of City Hall into the NCTV studio? Exactly. Skype. Skype. <laughs> right, you exactly. Know? And then the question becomes can we stream a high enough resolution stream to, you know, broadcast on television? You know? And the boys at NCTV figured it they out. They did it Aren't again. They, smart? Huh? they did you it know? again, right? <laughs> I tell you. So, you know, this, this race has just been, you know, it's just been it's a crazy, been, it's crazy, been crazy. Yeah, yeah. Now the work begins. Now the work begins. And for some, like right. uh, Mayor uh, Claire Higgins, the work continues. The work continues, right. You know. Right. And the other thing about Higgins, too, is that she has assembled a team around her. Mm. Um, and um, some of her choices are controversial. You know, Wayne Fiden, who's the director of the planning department, mm -hmm. you know, I tell you, people either love him or they hate him. You know, we've got Terry Anderson, the economic development director, mm -hmm. who it looks like she's headed, she's going to be perhaps heading her own department mm. funded by community development block grant funds. So these are some, these are some of the issues around, uh, around Mayor Higgins. Right. You know, it's, it's the, 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 uh, the, the uh, people that she has surrounded herself with in city government who are her appointees. So it's like, you know, Claire Higgins is only one person. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. And so, so that's the thing. So if Barsley had been, yeah, exactly. Right. We would have seen a whole new slate of appointees. Absolutely. Right, yeah. A lot of people would have uh, lost their positions. Absolutely. Yeah, right, yeah. So we just want to say so, um, congratulations to all of those who um, have been elected and re-elected uh, tonight. Um, we want to thank um, Northampton Community Television for hosting this and bringing this to the people of Northampton live. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> this was awesome. We'll do it again in two years. Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> uh, thanks to Dave, um, Dave Packman of uh, Dave Midweek, Packman, Politics, Midweek Politics, who was our field correspondent at City Hall via That's Skype. Right. right. Uh, Dave, any hey last words before we wrap? 
No, you know, it's pretty much, I think we're going to call it a day here. No real reason at this point to wait for 6B. The, the vote totals will not change the results in any race as close as we can see. So we're going to wrap up here. Um, a lot of interesting races, some close, some not close at all. And we'll see the final numbers tomorrow in the paper, I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. You did a wonderful job down there. Thanks, guys. Um, and it was a lot uh, of fun, Henry. A lot of fun. We'll do it again in two years. Yeah, right? we have to. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Well, folks out there, uh, have a good evening, and uh, maybe we'll see you at uh, one of at the at one at of the parties. Right? Yeah. That's absolutely. right. Yeah.